I have never done that before. <sighs> Hello beautiful people, my name is Bridget and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is the third video and the final video about the Bloodlust palette by Jeffree Star Cosmetics. So over the past couple days I've had a, a lot of time with this palette. We did a first impressions video together. We also did a three looks one palette. I will leave both of those down below. And this is my fifth look using the palette. So up close. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to make this fifth look be the one that you could wear to work or something very subtle for like an everyday look because everything else I did was very pink or was very purple or very green or blue. Like it was a lot. So I tried to do one that was very subtle and I think we came up with a pretty nice look for look number five. So this palette retails for $54 on Jeffree Star's website. It is still available for sale on Beautylish. It's sold out on Jeffree Star's website as well as Beauty Bay, but Beautylish still has this in stock. So let's go ahead and get to the video and do an in-depth review. Okay guys, before we get started, if you're not subscribed to my channel already, I'd greatly appreciate it if you did that. Now let's start talking about the palette. Let's start about the basics of the palette, which is the packaging. We have the faux velvet. We have this like a little, it, it's kind of like a thick sticker. It's not like a sticker. It's not going to come off like a sticker, but you know what it feels like a sticker? You know what I'm saying? On the front, so we have this huge ball. If you could get over the size of this palette being like the size of someone's head and the weird velvet packaging and the weird shape it's hard to store, I think even if you can fit this inside your drawers where you store makeup, if you do that, this big ball gets in the way. This could have been a lot smaller even if you wanted it to be easier to open because like the trunk cases were hard to open, but this is easier to open, but it's huge. So we don't need this huge mechanism for this. It makes hard makes it harder for things to go pressed against it and stored easily. So very impractical palette. Not every single person who buys an eyeshadow palette is going to use every single Jeffree Star palette as the display piece. So that is a critique about this. And it's enormous. Like, she a thick em. She a thick em. So, besides the packaging, which I feel like we touched on in my first impressions video, the palette color scheme, like when I changed the background a while back and you guys seem to like it, is not very lustful. Blood lust. Both of those things seem very deep and vampy, maybe red. But the lustfulness, this seems more of a royal, like a kind of a crown royal if you drink liquor kind of thing. Packaging, it doesn't really scream lust to me. These colors on the inside are extremely light, so the lustfulness, I don't get. Now the color scheme on the inside, I still do think is really pretty. A lot of people are into it because it is such a lighter color scheme. It's very pastel. However, I quite enjoy a pastel color scheme, so I do like the color scheme in this palette. Something I would critique about the color scheme in this palette is the red and the green and the teal. So the teal actually matches well with the purples. I feel like the green and the red are kind of out of place. They need something to go with them. So what I would suggest is maybe take out one of the light shimmers that come off very similar or one of the mattes that you can dip into lighter handed or deeper handed. Like, like these two. You could just light, dip into it lighter, dip into it like harder. Get the same color out of it. Replace it with maybe a orange or maybe a golden shade. I feel like both of those things would really pair a lot better with the red because right now there's not even like a really dark shade other than the black with purple glittery flecks in it that pairs well with the red. It's very out of place for me. I feel like maybe an orange, maybe like a deep terracotta burnt color, something would match better with this red than nothing because nothing goes with it right now. Like what do you compare it with that blue? It's weird. Um, so I feel like that's out of place however the formula of that red crazy. We're going to do a formula breakdown in a second. We'll break down each shade. I'll tell you what I think about them. But yeah, the color scheme in general, I think could use an orange or maybe a golden hue. Something that the red can pair with better than literally nothing that goes with it in here. Unless you want a black, but the black, black has purple glitter in it. So it's not like a regular black matte. So that's a little critique on the color scheme and the green feels out of place too. I feel like the teal makes sense, but the weird mossy green could really have been a yellow or orange or maybe even just like an actual royal purple color you know so packaging I would rate it I don't know it's hard to rate because it's very beautiful don't get me wrong but even if you want to set it like if I wanted to set it on this table back here I can't it's gonna roll in this ball you gotta store it with the logo upside down if you want to set it against something so packaging practicality <sighs> practicality too like, look of it, six. For me, the velvet doesn't really do it for me. I don't know. I feel like you're going to get cat hair, pet hair, dust is going to collect on this very easily. You get powder from your shadows on your velvet. It's going to mess it up. So, that's my rating for the packaging. Color scheme, I would give this a... 
I'd give it a 6 because I do enjoy the color scheme. I just don't feel like it matches the overall theme or aesthetic that he was supposed to be allegedly going for with this collection. So that's my rating for that. Let's go ahead and start breaking down what I think about each individual shade in this palette. So the first shade in here is called Your Majesty, which is a white matte shade. It's kind of an off-white. It's more of a gray-based white, but it's still a white matte shade. And Your Majesty is my most used shade out of the palette. I believe I used it in every look except for one. I feel like it's really powdery, so it has the same kickback, very fluffy, powdery effect that, say, an Anastasia palette palette will give you like you have soft glam modern renaissance that's the kind of formula when you dip into the matte and it flies everywhere that's what you get however the matte itself it applies very smoothly it's very light and it's lovely to work with it also helps you blend any other shades in the palette that maybe are a little more patchy there are a couple jeffree star palettes in my collection that i have that have a purpley tone in here or a deeper teal shade that are patchy so i feel like i have the same problems with this palette as well with those few shades but the majority of it is pretty standard. I feel like this bone shade is pretty standard as well. Pretty good, just a lot of kickback. So the next shade we're talking about is called Take the Crown, which is a lilac purple. It's very soft purpley shade. I would say that this shade in particular, oh let me do some swatches for you. Let me do that. The bone white shade, probably hard to see. We did swatches in my first impressions video. I'm just gonna swatch them on my little blank piece of wrist I have here um, while I'm talking about each shade. So Take the Crown as the like lilac purpley shimmery shade. Swatches out lovely. This shade in particular I find really lovely. It isn't as like metallic-y bold as I would prefer. Some of his shimmer formulas are a little bit underwhelming, but this one is better than some other ones in this palette. I do like the lilac shimmery shade. It's very soft, really easy to work with. It stays on your lid for a pretty good amount of time, and I do quite enjoy it. No complaints about Take the Crown. The next shade we're talking about is Deviant, which is this one right here. And in my first impressions video, a lot of you guys were like, oh my god, you're the only person who can say Deviant correctly. I feel like it's a standard word, <laughs> and I feel like if you ever saw, like, deviant art growing up and stuff, that's what I think of. So I, I can't believe people don't know how to say that word, but it is a light matte pastel lavender color. So this one is extremely light in the palette. I don't know if it's going to show up on you for the deeper skin tone unless you have, like, a really, really light base going on. This is how it swatches on the wrist. I'm just doing an up-down motion with these. Um, and I feel like it's really good matte. It really shows up really nicely on my lid, and I loved it in our first impressions look. I feel like it stuck in there really nicely, and it was very smooth. The next shade in here is the one I have on my lid currently. Um, I gave this a second chance. It was in my third look of my 3 looks 1 video, or 3 looks 1 palette video. However, I just wanted to see it by itself and see if it stood the test of time. And it's only been on for like 35 minutes on my lid. And it's just it's very subtle, and it's not very... <laughs> It's like, don't get me wrong, when you swatch, it's this shade right here, when you swatch it, it is a beautiful pink with like some gold reflex in it, it appears. Um, maybe some peachiness to this pink. However, it does not stay. It's an extremely subtle, so it shows up really shimmery when you swatch it out. But on the lid, it's just so subtle. It's like I don't even have a shimmer on the lid practically. It just shows a little bit of base color. So, not a fan of Beauty Sleep. However, I love the name Beauty Sleep for a palette shade. It sounds super cute. The next shade is... One of his new formulas, it's a glitter, but not so much base pigment to it. So this is the shade Wet Jewel. It's this really light pinky one that looks very, very pink. But in actuality, it's it's pink, but mostly it's for the glitter. My arm's a little wet. This is what it looks like. There's not too much of a base pigment to this one. It's a great shade to transition between other things. I find that this shade is really great as a transition shade or if you're going for something subtle but pink and like girly on the lid, it's a great shade for that as well. However, if you want something to be really, really hot pink on your lid, you should put something down like matte before you go over it with this shade. That's the only critique, but it is pretty cute. The next shade after that is Royal Pain, which is this shade right here. I'm very happy to see this shade in here. It's a great transition for a lot of our really light shades in here. So. For me, this kind of color is a beautiful transition, especially if you don't have like a cool tone brown, which is like a standard transition shade. It doesn't swatch out that well, but it blends so nicely over the lid and over the crease. It's just really easy to work with. It shows up quite nice, stays very true to color, and it makes a lot of these really light pink shades in the second row really easy to work with. You can just throw it on the lid after you use that. It's also what I have in my crease right now mixed with another shade we'll talk about later. Our next shade in the palette is Dungeon, which is this really gray purple. It's very gray based purple, but I th still think it's kind of a purpley tone. So that's what it looks like on the fingers, swatched out on the arm. It's actually a decent swatch for being a matte. 
This is one of my favorite shades in the palette because it just darkens up everything. There's so much light pastel stuff in this palette that I feel like it really needed something to darken it up with. I do wish that this shade was matching the packaging like a really deep vampy purple, but it being a little more gray, maybe it's supposed to help with the pink transitions or something. Or maybe to pair it with the red, I don't know. I do like the shade, it's really great for deepening up a look if you have something really pastel and you want to add a little depth to it. But it is a little bit out of place. Like it could be a could be this kind of purple, but it's not. The next shade in the palette is called Scandal Water. Apparently that's something about Rubber Girl they called that drama. I don't know. It's a indigo-y periwinkle blue. It's, it's very periwinkle. And this to me was a pain in the butt to work with. That's what it looks like. I tried to use this shade in today's look um, with this one and I wiped it off <laughs> because I just look was not coming out. It's definitely one of those you put a little pigment on it sticks and it doesn't want to blend out. It's not that easy to blend up either. There's not much kickback in the pan. It's very hard pressed. I feel like it was difficult to work with. So for me this is the first shade in the palette so far that we've talked about. We're already halfway through that I'm not a fan of. But everything else up to that point was looking good. Next shade we're talking about is called Sworn Enemy, which is a very random green in the middle of the palette. But it does break up a lot of the pinky purples when you look at it. So this is it. It's like a mossy green. And I use this in a couple looks and I really enjoy it. Now again, it's kind of a subtleness to it. It's not the most blinding metallic foiledness in the world. But it's a lot better than the Beauty Sleep shade we talked about. And I feel like it has some nice depth too. I feel like when I put this in a look... I like the look better so I quite enjoy the green it feels very smooth it's really easy to apply you cannot use this shade with a brush like hardly at all unless you like a really really wet brush it's way better to apply with a finger it doesn't want to pick up the brush but it is lovely <sighs> this next shade is my favorite one in the palette even though I love a light matte it's not exciting this is exciting it's this other new formula so there's only two new formula shades in here this is called pink magic <laughs> I feel like Jeffrey made this shade and he was just like, yeah, I'll just make a palette around it because it's that good. So this is the swatch of this shade. It's like a beautiful Barbie dream. It has so much like yellow gold glitter reflex into this. It's so metallic. Like finally the camera wants to focus on a swatch because it knows this is a star. Like this is just beautiful. I only went like that in the palette and swatched down. It's so smooth. Like this is absolutely beautiful. However, it will stain your lid. But I don't personally care about it. If it does that, it's fine. Let me show you how it stains. I only swatched it for that brief second we were talking about it. And this isn't coming off. Like I used a baby wipe to try to get it off and it's not coming off. So... And my fingers stain from that too. It does stain. Stains a lot more than anything else in this palette does. Except for the red. Just to know in case you're sensitive or you don't like wearing makeup the next day and you won't, don't want to look like you have pink eye, I guess. I know pink eye is in your eyeball, for the record, but you know what I'm trying to say. Alright, next shade in the palette is that really random red we were talking about. Very random. It looks like my lipstick. This shade is called a Bleeding Heart. I'm going to swatch it with my pinky finger. Um, because I don't care if my pinky finger is stained. I'm going to swatch it on the other arm so I don't mess up my one swatch and chunk on this arm. Let's just swatch it in my hand. So, she is so pigmented. She's so big, like she's a lot. This is the shade up close. Um, it's extremely smooth. It is like the prettiest matte swatch I've ever seen. However, it's not a matte shadow. Like it looks, let me look, let me show, let me like this on my hand and I'll show you. This is the shade, this is the staining on my pinky and on my hand. Um, but... This shade, when you're looking at it, it looks like a shimmer. Right? It swatches like it's going to be a matte. So I'm, I'm calling it a satin. I don't know what kind of formula this is. I've never encountered a formula like this where it looks like a shimmer. Um, it feels like a shimmer. If When you blend it out, it feels like a shimmer. What is that? But it, it, it looks like a matte. So I'm calling it a satin. I don't know. Extreme. Very random to the palette, but the formula... Oh my god, I've never experienced anything like that, like that in my life. Like, it's not even... If you think about the red and like the jawbreaker and the blood sugar palettes, they're nothing like this. I know he said it's not a new formula, the only those two are the one new formula, but it's just super creamy. So if he hasn't, comes out with another palette, he wants to throw like one or two of these in here, not random colors though, I'd be into it. The next shade is Executioner, which is a black with glitter. So when I swatch it and stuff, you can see it's purple, right? It was just black at first, but it's purple. 
Um, I was thinking this was going to be a black matte with glitter in it, like it looks when you swatch it on your finger. However, it has a lot of purple in it when you swatch it out. There's a lot of purple little random glitters in here. And don't get me wrong, it swatches and it performs great. However, if you pack it on, you see all the glitter reflex and it looks really stunning. But the moment you start blending it, it loses the glitter and it turns more of a gray. So, that could be good, it could be bad. It should have been a matte black to begin with. Um, but he threw glitter in there and if you blend it out it disappears. So I'm not sure the point in that. But just know that in case you're wondering. Alright, bottom two rows now. First shade right here is called High King. This is one of my favorites in the palette. It is a mix between a pink and a purple. I described it in my first impressions as it's like doll parts, but darker. If you know his liquid lipstick that I love. However, this shade swatches terribly. Like, It's not a good swatch. I swatched it twice. It swatches terribly. However, the shade itself is a beautiful pinky purpley shade. It blends out super nice. It matches well with a bunch of these shimmers in here, whether it's the Pink Magic, which is just like... Um, the one I love the most, like the most beautiful swatch. Or if it's this one down here, it just goes beautifully with it. Like this color matches a lot in the palette and I really love how it performed. It blends so well. The next shade after that is called Vivid Mood. Honestly, we don't need it. I feel like if you have this lavender in here, this one doesn't really do it for me. Like it's okay. It's a little darker and stuff. But for me, it just feels like a duplicate shade because it's not so pigmented on the eyes when you blend it out. You could have just used a mix between the high key shade we just talked about mixed with Deviant, which was the light lavender, and you would have gotten this shade. So it feels like a duplicate shade to me. Because, like, these two shades would have been fine. You don't need this one, but it's okay. It blends out fine. It's just not anything exciting to me. Nothing I feel like I need in the palette. Next shade in the palette is the other shade I blended over my lids, so, or over my crease. So I had this in the crease, and I mixed it with this shade right here, which is like a taupe. And it's called Monarchy. So this is great for lightening up any shade that you have, but it's not too bold on its own, like, maybe on a different skin tone. I can't even swatch it there because it's stained, but maybe on a different skin tone, but for me, it blends smoothly, it performs nicely, but it's very hard to see. Like, that's very hard to see. That's as bold as it gets. That's a finger swatch that's as dark as it gets, and it's just not... It's not dark at all, but it's very smooth and performs nicely. I just wish it was darker. The next shade after that is the shade Blood Queen, which is the darkest purple we have in our dark purple palette packaging. It's the darkest purple we have. So this is another matte formula. It has like a little crown indention here. I'm going to swatch in the back of my hand so not everything's all stained, but it swatches okay. The shade itself on the, like on the eyes performs pretty it's pretty but it's a little patchy I would definitely use another shade in conjunction with that if you're gonna do it on the outer corner especially you can kind of hug any little spot you may have on your lid it's a little patchy but overall it's pretty decent it's pretty decent not terrible I've had some other Jeffree Star purple formulas that swatch or perform way patchier so I'm not complaining about this one because they have there have been worse like there's a purple oh it's no it's a blue shade in the blue blood palette that looks purple on the eyes and it's just horrible but this one's okay it's a little patchy but it's not terrible mix it with another shade you'll be fine next shade after that is <laughs> vial serpents it is a teal shade it is a very random teal shade but teal and purple do go together well so i give it credit for that this shade for me a lot of you guys said other people can get it a lot darker than me and i'm trying like, I'm going back in here over and over again. However, for me, it's just a blue green. It does not get dark. It gets dark on my finger, but swatched out, like, it doesn't get dark at all. I can't get the shade very dark. I couldn't get it dark on my eyes either. And it's extremely dry and extremely patched. There's no kickback in the pan. It's very hard pressed and really hard to work with. My least favorite shade out of the palette is for sure Vile Serpent. Alright, last shade we're talking about is Betrayal, which is really cute. I like the nice guillotine impression in this one. I don't know why I thought that was kind of cool, and it's the only guillotine thing in the palette. So, this is the swatch. This one is just so smooth and so pretty. It swatches lovely. It's not quite as pretty as that Pink Magic show we did before because it's like gorgeous. This one is less metallic. However, it's still a really pretty, really smooth swatch. I thought pairing this shade Betrayal with this shade right here, which was High Key. This is like the perfect color combination if you want a matte and a shimmer that match perfectly. It's so nice. And also, I really think this pairs well to darken up any of the light, really pastel shimmers. You want to go with that kind of root. So I thought overall that shade was lovely. <sighs> 
I have never done that before. <sighs> I dropped it. Like, there's purple and I gotta clean this up now. And look at my knee. I got a shadow on my knee. Alright, so let's talk about the overall rating and what I think about the palette as a whole now that we've talked about every single shade in here and give you thoughts on my packaging. I think the price is a little high. I want to pay for the quality of the package, the quality of the palette itself is on the inside, not the packaging. I'd rather have like the Thirsty palette or like the original Androgyny Beauty Killer palette packaging or even the train case packaging 52 instead of 54 for something like that's gonna get dirty. Like I already got cat hair on this. But um, overall, I would rate the palette a six and a half out of ten. I'm saying six and a half because you definitely need like a darker shade in here to darken up with that doesn't have glitter in it. This shade right here is too gray to mix with like the greens and the blues and stuff in here. I feel like it's kind of weird. It's still a purple. So you need like a deep vampy purple in here for the color scheme to make sense. The red feels out of place. This taupe shade is too light to actually do anything, I feel like, unless you're lightening up another shade and there's already light shades in here. <sighs> there's a couple in here that are patchy. Like this one's not the most patchy in the world, but it's still slightly patchy. The Beauty Sleep shade is very underwhelming and kind of dull, and this shade is hard to work with, but most of the palette, other than those three shades, is really easy to work with and really nice. So, I'll definitely get some use out of this palette. I think it's a good quality. I'm giving it a 6.5 out of 10 because the color scheme is very oddly put together, and some of the shades are not perfect. And I know when I say anything bad about Jeffree Star Shadow, I get tons of crap about it and I don't care because it's the truth. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.